Hello, welcome. My name is Colin, call sign MM0PX if you've not been here before. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at this battery here. This is the Fogstar Drift 105 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Now, this is quite a, a sizable investment for me, so it's not a choice that I've actually made uh, easily. Um, I was actually put onto this battery by Bruce, uh, G4 ABX, and also for the charger, which I've got here somewhere. H -H TRC charger from Amazon. I'll put links to both of these items. Uh, Fogstar you can buy direct here in the UK, direct from Fogstar UK which is great and the charger is from Amazon. Now I think this battery represents really good value for money and I've actually bought this battery with all my own money. Now I've been monetized on YouTube. Bearing in mind my channel is really small, I've been monetized for 13 months. So after 13 months of monetization, I still had to put £100 of my own money towards this battery. And this battery is £369 pounds, uh, at the time of making this video. Now there is a couple of cheaper batteries that we have, I think maybe eco-worthy, uh, being one, I think it's about £310 or £340. Pounds. But this Fogstar Drift has a lot of features that only exists on higher end batteries. Um, it's got uh, overcharge protection, uh, discharge protection, low temperature cutoff, high temperature cutoff. Um, it's even got a self-heating function. So if the temperature is below freezing, I mean you're not meant to charge lithium iron phosphate. Um, what you can actually do is when you connect your charger, the first thing it will do is it will heat a, a little heater matrix in here, and it'll actually raise the temperature of the battery. Um, and when it's warm enough, it will then um, start to heat. Um, so I ordered this battery on the Sunday. Um, the Monday morning I had the shipping notification from DPD and on Tuesday afternoon I had the battery. So first class service from, from Fogstar here in the UK. Um, I know that when Bruce uh, purchased his battery he was a bit dubious about buying from the likes of Amazon so he actually went and, went and visited Fogstar UK and visited their, their premises. Um, so that was really good to know. Um, so you went and had a look at their operation. Now it is a Chinese battery, um, but they do, you know, they do have at least they have service here in the UK. It's Grade A Eve cells. Um, the DC guy, if you don't know if you've seen any of his videos, he's actually done a teardown of this. I'll put a link to that down in the description uh, as well. And he actually drew 108 amp hours uh, from this battery, more than the the advertised 105. So why do I need this battery? Well, I've been a bit of a Ultramax fanboy. Um, I have Ultramax's 7 amp power. I have their 18 amp power golf cart battery. And then I now have the uh, Fogstar Drift 105 amp power. The two smaller batteries, the smallest one's obviously great for QRP operation. The 18 amp power, which is probably still my favourite because it's just a grab and go battery. If I'm going to do three, four hours worth of operating, that's the battery I'm going to take with me and I could run a 100 watt radio with that because it allows me to draw 25 amps but if I want to go away for longer periods of time that's why I've, I've bought the Fog Star. so I thought even if I'm going away for two, three, four days with my um, operating, I'm not operating all the time, this battery is going to do it but not only that, um, I want to do a little bit of camping and I actually want to use this battery as the centrepiece for my um, DC power supply um, a lot of people are buying, uh, you know, power stations. They're, they're everywhere. They're all the rage at the minute for taking camping, charging your phone. But what I found is one major flaw in them for radio amateurs is they don't have enough DC connections. So they don't have, for example, uh, multiple connections to take 20 amps or 25 amps at 12 or 13.8. So I think the native voltage in a lot of these batteries is sometimes 24, 30, 48 volts it's a higher voltage and then obviously take that up to an inverter um, or they convert that, that down the way. So I wanted to do it myself. Now there's loads of videos on YouTube of people make, building their own battery boxes and I'm going to keep it simple to begin with. I'm going to have the battery, um, I'm going to have a, a deep blue sea fuse box and I'm going to mount it inside a Pelican style case and I'm going to put a lot of uh, DC connections. So I'm going to have power pole connections I'm going to have uh, USB and USB-C connections. I'm going to have a cigarette lighter socket. So it's going to give me, you know, a couple of days worth of power wherever I'm going to go. Um, further on down the line, 
um, I'd like to develop the system so I'd like to put a DC to DC charger as well as an MPPT solar and Renogy actually makes the I think Renogy is the only company that actually make, make a unit that do both so when I'm driving along I can plug this in and it will charge uh, from the car um, as well uh, looking at putting a 1000 watt inverter 240 volt inverter so I need a 100 amp draw from a battery and this will actually do that I'm not saying it's going to last particularly long but say I need to get 240 uh, volts for something maybe I want to use you know I don't know um, uh, uh, you know, an air fryer or something for ease of cooking maybe going car camping or something so this this battery is actually going to perform um, the, the centerpiece for that so uh, when when the battery arrived it had um, about 20 amp hours in at 19 I think it was um, there's actually a cool little lap um, it's absolutely brilliant um, so and that's one thing that I like about this I don't need to put a battery shunt on in a monitor to see what I'm drawing I'll be able to use my phone um, it's Bluetooth, it's on all the time, you can just connect to it, you can actually turn the battery on and off charging uh, to discharge, so I had to buy a charger and that's one thing that you need to bear in mind, so if you buy an Ultramax battery, which are great, um, they actually come with the charger, so this, ba this charger here, this HRTCP20, this was £70 from Amazon, uh, call it a smart charger, and I'm, I say I'm fairly happy with it, um, if I was going to buy a a Victron or something like that, that was going to be more than twice the money so I'm quite happy with this, so it's got a switch so you can basically charge it to 5 amp, 3 amp sorry, 5 amp or 20 amp now I've only charged this battery once and what I noticed was when I started to charge it the battery, the BMS in it was allowing it to charge at 20 amps but very quickly um, it dropped to about 15, 15 and a half amps and it, it charged for the entire time so it took about 5 hours to actually charge this battery uh, from 20 amp hours up to full capacity but I think that's probably more to do with the charger but I'm quite happy with it, this charger's got an XT60 connection on it which I think is really good um, so that gives you a, a few options now, one thing about this battery is it's super light it's 10 kilos, you know I could pick this up and do this and I'm not particularly strong you know if you were to look at a comparable lead acid battery and I had one in my little van I had a I think it was a 95 amp hour it was uh, connected to a split charger it was great it was in there all the time but I could not lug that thing about it was three times heavier than this battery and with a lead acid battery you can only draw say half of the um, half of the capacity before you need to charge it um, or you're going to actually start to um, damage that battery and also with a lead acid battery they'll rapid charge up to say 80%, 90% and then that last bit takes a long time you don't have that with uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries so there we have it, it's just a quick overview of this battery I just wanted to, to, to show you guys um, been a purchase that I've been considering for a while um, as I say quite a sizable one so um, I'll, I'll do some follow up videos, you'll probably see it with me running uh, portable operations I'll have it tucked away, I've got a just a basic cable I'm going to hook up to it just now and I'll be able to uh, yeah, to, to run my radios and a few other bits and pieces of it so I think it's going to be a great bit of kit. Okay guys thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one